Good morning, salutations, and hello. My name is Larry, and this is The Ethical Atheist. And today I want to talk about uh, a scientific theory that came out in the early 20th century, something they discovered called learned helplessness. And the reason that I want to talk about it is because it's related to a lot of what's happening today in our current political climate. So the experiment that they performed was they subjected dogs to a series of shocks. They put them on a grid that was electrified. And they found that if the dogs had no way of escaping the shocks, a lot of the time they would simply just lay down on the grid and give up trying to avoid the painful stimuli. And they found that once subjected to this treatment for a long enough period of time, <clears throat> once removed from the grid, they would also not try to avoid other painful stimuli. They would simply accept whatever happened to them because they had learned that they have no control and that they simply had to accept negative things. <laughs> Now, there's a lot to be said about whether that experiment was ethical to perform, which I would give a resounding no, but it does give some helpful information. Because humans do this too. When we're faced with overwhelming negativity all the time, we learn that there's nothing that we can do about that. And this is very contrary to our interests, for example. We have a toxic system in the United States where the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. People are starving and dying. People are losing their health insurance because the insurance companies want to make more money. You know, they're squeezing the life out of the American working and poor class. But we're not really doing anything about it. You know, we, we make a, a group, put on a good face and say we're going we're gonna to elect officials that care about us, but none of the people that are up for election do. And this has been demonstrated in case after case after case. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, these people don't care about us. But we elect them anyway. Because we have learned that there's nothing that we can do about this rigged system. <laughs> we have become so apathetic to the situation because we feel like we can't change it. But we can. We can always change things for the better. We just have to fight hard enough and long enough and make enough noise and make enough trouble for the people on top that they recognize that things need to change. And if at the end of the day that doesn't work, well, you scrap the whole thing and start from scratch. And that's ugly, and it would be painful. But we cannot perpetuate a system that causes such mass suffering. I live in poverty. I have lived in worse poverty before than I live in now. But I know what it looks like to be sick and not be able to go to the doctor because you can't afford it. I know what it looks like to have to eat ramen for the seventh day in a row because you don't have grocery money until next Friday. Um, <clears throat> and I haven't even had it as bad as some people that I know personally. And we're in a system right now that is forcing more and more people into that situation. We're outsourcing good paying jobs. We're reducing pay for the jobs that we already have here in the States. We're, we're levying these, it's basically an assault on the lower class. Saying that, fuck you, these people that are already billionaires on the top have to make an extra $2 million this year. So fuck you and anything that protects you. They're talking about, I, I know the, the Meals on Wheels was not as big a deal as people thought it was. The Meals on Wheels was put on the floor by mistake. And that got blown up into a big, huge thing. But I firmly believe that they want to cut anything that helps people. They want to cut Medicaid. They want to cut 
social programs. They want to cut SNAP. Or SNAP is my, my local division of food stamps. But they want to cut anything that is helping poor people survive. And after so long where this has been the status quo, it's exhausting to continue to try fighting it. It's, you know, I, I, the whole hashtag resist movement that started at the beginning of this year, it was trending for a little while and then it just kind of fell off because it is exhausting to maintain that level of political outrage for very long. And eventually, no matter how great the evil you're facing, no matter how great the opposition you're facing, you just become too tired to fight anymore. And I understand that. I understand protest fatigue. I understand that, oh, what, oh my god, what has Donald Trump done now? Or what have his lackeys that are you know, actually running his administration doing? <clears throat> and it just gets to the point where it feels so hopeless that you just give up on trying. But we cannot do this. We cannot give up on trying to build a better world. One of my personal mottos is, if you always settle for less, less is all you'll ever have. If you don't fight for it, you are never going to have a better situation. And I don't mean fighting as in, you know, run out into the streets with your guns and start shooting politicians, but I mean, find petitions for change and support them. For example, I strongly support Justice Democrats, which wants to eliminate money in politics, wants to put regular people up for nomination that actually have platforms that they stand for and aren't being bought by corporations. And I think that that is one of the biggest things that will help American politics, is stop letting corporations bribe politicians into voting for legislation in their favor that crushes the American people. Because that is the reason that most of the bad things have been happening. You know, why are we in war after war after war after conflict? Is because we want to support the military-industrial complex. Why do they want to cut Medicaid and why did they want Obamacare to fail? Because the insurance companies, the private insurance companies, want to make more money. Big Pharma wants to make more money. Big Pharma wants to charge you a thousand dollars for a pill that costs 30 cents to make so that some asshole can live in a billion dollar penthouse suite. And what we need to do It, and I'm, I'm prepared to accept that this may take a long time, it may be a long transition, it may be a painful transition, but we need to eliminate money from politics, and we need to get people in positions of authority that actually give a damn about the American people. <laughs> I don't typically identify as, you know, a party politics person. I am left-leaning, I am extremely socially liberal, but both parties at this point are so corrupt and so bought by corporations that I can't feel justified voting either way. Because I know, no matter what platform they stand on, they're gonna vote whatever way that their billion-dollar bosses told them to. But we cannot give in to apathy. We cannot give in to despair. We cannot learn helplessness. Because if we do, things will only get worse. And believe me, they can get so much worse. We have to stand. We have to fight. 
we have to continue to try to move forward, or at the very least, not let them push us back. Thank you very much for watching. May Darwin be with you.